Now we have all the prerequisites to build Monte Carlo simulation. Let's break down this big task into steps. So first we need to model uncertainty in input variables. What we can do is to ask a user to provide minimum and maximum values for input variables and uh, then we will model them as uniform distributions in, uh, within these limits. So this can be done in Excel with a rand function. Then we need to repeat calculation many, many times, having these randomized input variables and to store a result in net present values. And from those net present values, we can build the probability distribution that is actually the result of the Monte Carlo simulation. And the probability distribution is nothing more than just a histogram that can be done with Excel. So uh, the only step where we need uh, VBA is uh, this recalculation. So practically we will need to code a loop uh, that repeats the calculations and then stores the uh, resulting net present values into Excel. Now uh, let's think how we can organize the model. Uh, we definitely need first main sheet where there would be inputs for uh, simulation and the resulting probability distribution and the button to run the macro. Uh, then we will need one uh, worksheet that uh, we can later hide, but there we will store the uh, net present values resulting from the macro. And then we will also benefit from having one more worksheet where we will organize um, building the uh, histogram, the uh, probability distribution for, for net present values. And of course we will need to write the macro itself, but it will appear pretty easy after we will organize all this stuff in Excel. Let's make it happen. Now uh, I saved the um, button for a big macro, let's convert it to Monte Carlo simulation. It wouldn't be much difficult than that, by the way. So our uh, first step is to make our uncertain uh, variables. And for me, let's say it would be investment and uh, annual profit. And uh, uh, we ask here user to specify minimum and maximum. Let me uh, mark it as user input. So let's say investment would be from 500 to 2000 and uh, profit from uh, 500, or well, let's say 100 to, um, let's say 800. And uh, we can randomize those. Let's use function run. Here it is, it returns a number in between 0 and 1, evenly distributed. Okay, so uh, uniform distribution and it changes on the recalculation. So practically every time you press F9 or this uh, next uh, in the loop is working in the VB, uh, the rand uh, function generates a new random number. And now uh, here the prompt also says that uh, there is no arguments inside, so it exists as it is. Now we need, it, need to convert it from 0 to 1 to uh, this diapason from minimum to maximum. How do we do that? So a little bit of arithmetics, minimum investment plus maximum multiplied by this random number. Now um, let's check would it work. If random number is 0, then I have minimum, correct. If random number is 1, then I have maximum plus minimum. No, it should be only maximum, so I deduct minimum from here again. Okay, now it should work properly, it looks like. Yes, and this would be our important numbers that we will be using in the calculation to get the net present value. So uh, therefore, I would suggest to copy the calculation list and uh, uh, the calculation sheet and use it separately for Monte Carlo simulation. So let's say uh, it's already the copied one. So my investment here would be uh, minus this value and my profit here, this number. Okay, did it change? Not everywhere. Everything should be correct. Yes, and each time it recalculates and each time we get new net present value. So uh, what else do we want? We want a user to uh, um, specify their simulation runs. Let it be, let's start with 10 while we are working on the model. And here would be run the simulation. Okay. 
So practically the first step is done. Now uh, what we need is to arrange the macro to make it work. So what do we want? We want n to be our uh, number of runs in here. So uh, let's immediately uh, reference the sheet. So first sheets and here would be MC simulation. Then range C9. That would be our N. Okay, and now what do we want? We want that net present value from this calculation from here are copied to here. And even let's formulate it even easier. First run, first loop, iteration of loop, and we want cell A1 to be equal to this cell in here. And then uh, next simulation run, the reference moves. So let's just make it happen. Sheets uh, MC data. I forgot the quotes. MC data. Range. Now uh, here from, let me make it bigger. Uh, range A plus I, it's exactly what I want, would be equal to sheets. Uh, calculation and range there we had C14 so don't change then the reference in there C14 okay let's see if it works now getting it small back if I run the macro Yes, in my data, I get all the net present values. Very good. Now, um, important thing here to do is, assuming if I'm a user and uh, I decided to uh, make, uh, let's say, 10 simulation runs first, and then I decided to change the inputs and make 9 simulation runs, then it would fill 9 cells, and this 10 would be from previous uh, inputs, so it would be wrong. So what we want, we want to uh, clear the contents of the whole um, of the whole column in here before the loop. Let's make it happen. Uh, we want again sheets M um, MC data. Now range would be the whole column. And uh, this is now the action, the method, what we want to do. So dot and clear contents. We are already familiar, familiar with this command. Now let's check if that's working. I want now nine simulation runs. I run the macro and this one is empty. Very good. Exactly what I want. Now the macro is uh, more or less ready. It's working as we want, and uh, we can build our uh, probability distribution from here. So um, it could be done in different ways. I can uh, get the embedded histogram. It works pretty awful. I can uh, do the uh, data analysis tool pack histogram. Here it is, but it's also uh, not very convenient. So I suggest here we build the uh, histogram by ourselves manually with just some tricks. And uh, then it would be helpful for further uh, making the model automatic. Uh, so uh, here I'll be building the, the histogram. I want to get the minimum first and the maximum of all the values that I have uh, in my data. But uh, again, the range could be different. So let me just call the whole uh, column data. OK. And now I can simply say minimum of data. And here it is. And maximum of data. And here it is. And I also want to have my range. That is simply the maximum minus my minimum. OK. Now, uh, in order to make the histogram nice, I can, of course, define the number of beans and just build a graph from uh, minimum to maximum. But uh, 
it would look awful. What I want here is to build a graph from, let's say, minus 1000 to 2000. That would look good. And I won't need to uh, every time adjust the uh, axis limits for, for these graphs. So uh, how to make it happen? Uh, I want to round that down, minimum down and maximum up, to uh, 1000. So I need somehow to get the 1000 here. So uh, how do I get it? From the range I can do a couple of tricks. So first I want to uh, round the range uh, to integer, so zero uh, digits. Let's see. Yes, it's absolutely what I want. Uh, then I can uh, calculate the length of that number. It would be 4. And then I can use it as a, a power of 10. But I need to add minus 1. Here is my 1000. And I'll be using that for rounding. So now I can get minimum uh, new and maximum new. So let's see. I want to uh, round down this value. Uh, but actually if I can only round it to uh, integer. So in order to get that integer I need to divide it first for my uh, rounding. 1000, then I can already round it to uh, integer, and then I'm reverting it back to 1000. Let's see what I get. It's zero, so it's not round down, it's round up actually. It's minus 1000. Now uh, let me check if I have, let's say, minimum uh, 100. Then it goes into opposite direction. So what I want to have here is actually if my uh, minimum is negative then I'm using round up but otherwise I'm using round down and let me fix the rounding reference so I can copy it to maximum zero is correct here I broke already minimum, minus 1000, it's exactly what I want, and copying it to maximum, and well, for the maximum uh, it should be rounding uh, to another direction, so we just change here down, and here up. Okay, exactly what we wanted, and let's get a new range, it would be 3000. So now we can decide the number of bins. Um, let me uh, so far make it fix. Uh, further, of course, you can play with that and make it uh, also automatic, defined by the user, and now all the uh, calculation will change. So uh, now first, the bin number would be from 1 to 50, actually 51. And then uh, the minimum edge of uh, every bin would be here, starting from this minimum. And then uh, the minimum uh, plus the uh, range of a bin, that is total range. And we lock it, divide it by the number of bins, and we lock it. And we just distribute it down. And at the end we have our 2000. Very good. And now we can uh, count the frequency of appearance of net present value in this data uh, in uh, between every these two numbers. So uh, count for each bin. How do we do that? Uh, we need to use count ifs. We have two criteria, uh, bigger than minimum and less than maximum. So criteria range would be data. Uh, the first criteria would be um, less then and we have have to have uh, have to use here and this value and then uh, criteria range two again data and uh, the criteria itself would be bigger than oh sorry it would be the opposite here bigger than minimum and uh, less less or equal than maximum 
Okay, let's see if it works. Yes, it counts something. Now we have only uh, 10 numbers in there, so it's not much. And from here we can uh, get our probabilities. That is practically that count divided by the number of beans. Oh, sorry, by the number of runs and F4 to lock it. And down and the percentage. Very good. So now we can build our histogram. We uh, hide the counts. Uh, we get this probability. And we insert the column chart. And uh, select data. And conveniently in our horizontal axis, we have these minimum values. OK. OK. And of course, we can make it look better, um, the axis, the change the uh, orientation of the text, the title, etc. And let's move it to our Monte Carlo simulation. Mm -hmm. And now let's see if it would work for, let's say, 100 runs so far. Run. And it takes a lot of time now for the macro to run. Why it happens, you can actually play with the model. I just escape to stop it. And, and uh, we have partial data in here, but um, the point is that uh, this calculation happens all the time uh, in every iteration of the loop, and the bigger the end, the, uh, the, the longer it becomes. So what we need is somehow to stop calculating that and make the calculations only after uh, the loop is done. So how do we do that? Uh, let's go to our um, Visual Basic Editor and uh, click on the sheet AMC histogram. It's exactly what we need to stop from calculating. Do we have anything useful in properties? Yes, we do. It's enable calculation. So what we actually can do in the macros, we can say sheets. Oh, we have it here. Then enable calculation is our property. Enable calculation here. And uh, let me see the syntaxes. So true or false. That's simple. So we want it to be false at the beginning. And then after the loop is done, we want to make it true. Let's see now how this would work. It wouldn't work. It's absolutely stuck because I have misspelled the sheet. Of course, we need to uh, enable calculations in histogram. Mm -hmm. And here also MC histogram. Now it should work, hopefully. Yes, and now this 100 works in a matter of seconds. And we can even do uh, 10,000. Let's see. It takes a bit longer, of course. But then we will have a nice histogram, a nice probability distribution. And then uh, we make uh, the, the graph itself look better. Look, And the form is more like a, a normal distribution now. Uh, what we can do in here to make it look better, format data series. And uh, we want to reduce cap width to zero. Now it looks like probability distribution. And here it is. Uh, make the interface to look uh, a bit better and more stylish. And uh, we have implemented our Monte Carlo simulation. And look at the macro. There is nothing extraordinary. And everything is pretty simple and everything that we already know. 
the Monte Carlo simulation now creates us a new level of analysis of investment project. If uh, before sensitivity analysis uh, told us a story factor by factor, uh, how net present value would react to that, the Monte Carlo distribution will uh, show us the biggest story. Uh, the very minimum is when all the uncertain inputs uh, were at their worst. For example, investment was uh, the most heavy 2,000 and profit was uh, about uh, 100. So then we get our worst net present value somewhere close to 2,000. And then uh, the same for the uh, best scenario. Then uh, here in this uh, very simplified model, we have only a linear relationship practically. So uh, we get um, uh, at some point close to triangular distribution. But if an investment project has some complexities inside, such as, uh, for example, some uh, specific taxation or uh, support uh, subsidies or something else like that, then uh, the shape of the distribution would also tell you a lot. And then you can also calculate some statistics in here that would help a user. How many, uh, wh what is the minimum? What is the maximum? Uh, what is uh, the area of the distribution below zero? It would be our risk. And if it is more than, let's say, 50%, then it's half chance that we get fail, we will lose money. What is the area above the distribution, practically the probability of success? So a lot of interesting information can be derived from here. And then, of course, you can do the distribution more visual, like, for example, um, color code all the negative outcomes and all the positive outcomes. So with this, we have a sophisticated set of tools for analyzing investment projects. Uh, sensitivity analysis, scenario analysis, break-even analysis, and Monte Carlo simulation.